now your host, Pastor Robert Scale. Welcome again to Jesus This Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales, and I tell you what a glorious week we're going to have in the Word of God as we continue to teach on living fear free. So you make sure you tell all your friends and all the saints you know, and, and even the people that are bound and backslid and those who need to come and walk with God, tell them to tune in. We're on every Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. Amen. Get your word Amen. That'll quicken you for the day. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. As we begin uh, to teach more, and I'm going to get more in depth on living fear free. One of the things, uh, fear is just one of the worst enemies that the church has. Fear is unbelief and doubt. Fear is is believing something other than how God loved you in Jesus on the cross. Another definition of fear is having faith in the wrong thing. And then fear always brings expectation of danger. You're always expecting to catch a cold. You're always expecting to get sick. And, and, and fear always uh, voices an expectation of danger. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? And um, it always comes to, to, to make you expect something other than God's love. And so we also begin to deal with uh, the, the four ways, and they, there could be more. I just don't know. But the four ways that fear comes. Number one, fear comes through uh, what you see. Uh, Peter saw the wind. Uh, Israel would see nations coming against them and bring fear. And Jehoshaphat and them went and started praying. But what they saw brought fear. And then uh, what you hear. Number two is what you hear. Uh, Jairus heard we're going to look at him today. And, and uh, you look, we'll look at some other uh, situations where what they heard brought fear to them. Number three, fear brings, uh, feelings bring fear. Man, you can just feel scared, and, and it brings fear. And then uh, the fourth one is your past. The devil loves to use our past, and we use our past. That brings the expectation of danger or expectation we can't live in who God made us in Christ Jesus. Now, let's read here in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, because... In order to live a fear-free life, and I want to deal with, with hearing, because there's a, there's a double side to hearing. And the number one side is hearing God's word. In every test and trial, you're going to hear what the devil got to say. You're going to see what your circumstance look like. You're going to hear something from that circumstance, and you're going to feel something from that circumstance. So you need to hear the word of God to come against what that fear is telling you. You always need a word from Jesus in every situation. Or you need a word what Jesus done did for you and me on the cross. How he have defeated all the works of the devil. Now let's read that in Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise uh, took part of the same. Jesus took part of, of flesh and blood like you and me. But the difference with Jesus was he didn't have a sin nature or the, the blood of Adam where he had a sin nature in his flesh or his soul. And so that through death, through spiritual death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death well, all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, there are many of you watching out there today, and fear had gripped your life in so many areas. <clears throat> it doesn't mean you're bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. It just means you're bound with fear. Jesus came to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so, Many times people don't even realize they don't, they in fear, they don't know where they're going to spend eternity. 
But you, you can't just say you go into heaven and you don't know why. Your faith have to be in Christ Jesus, what Jesus did for you, in order for you to know with confidence that you have eternal life. John said this in uh, 1 John chapter 5, uh, verse 13, that these things have I written unto you uh, that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of of the Son of God. And so believing is not just you saying, I believe in Jesus, but you have put faith in Jesus, what he taught, what he said, and what he did for you, where you are now producing his life living through you. Now, let me read this in the Amplified Bible in Hebrews 2, uh, verse 14. It makes it a little more clear. Since therefore these his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he, Jesus himself, in a similar matter, partook of the same nature that by going through death, he might bring to naught. See, naught means zero. And make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is the devil. See, Jesus made the devil zero. Now, now, you say, well, Pastor, scared the devil is working all around the world. Yes, but he's not working where faith in Jesus is. See, he's only working where there is no faith in Jesus. Now, listen carefully to what I'm getting ready to say. Jesus did not get rid of the devil. And as long as you're on this earth, you're going to have to deal with him. You're going to have to contend with him. Now, he didn't get rid of him. And so... What we have to do is to get a revelation of who Jesus is, what Jesus did to him for us so that you and I can live in faith in Jesus and walk in the victory whereby Christ has made us free. And so the devil is so crafty, he uses religion because he knows that anything that ain't faith in Jesus, I don't care where it's at in the Bible, it's not going to produce the love of God. And the love of God is the only thing that is going to cast fear out of us. Hallelujah. And so we need to get a revelation that Jesus brought the devil to naught. Now, it's my responsibility. That don't give me victory because of what Jesus did to the devil. What gives me victory is when I live in and operate in what Jesus did to the devil. And the devil wants uh, God's people to think he's not really defeated. You know, like we need to do something else to him. No. James 4, 7 said, uh, 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 submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil. Well, he wouldn't have said that if I got to give him place. Amen. You don't have to give the devil place because Jesus has defeated and, and, and destroyed the works of the devil where that we can live in faith in Christ and walk victorious over fear in every area in our lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus brought the devil he brought the devil to naught and made him of no effect who had the power of death that is the devil. Now, that don't mean the devil can't come and try to attack us. That just means that the devil will lose every time he comes if we are living in faith in how we got loved on that cross. Saints, one area that the devil hates, that he can't produce fear in the lives of those Christians who know who they are in Jesus, we know what Christ has done for us, and we are walking in our inheritance that God has provided for us for the saints. Now, let me read you a couple of translations of Hebrews 2.14 in the ALB translation. He became flesh too by being born in human form. For only as a human being could he die and in dying break the power of the devil 
who had the power of death. See, the power of death, saints, is what kept us separated from God without us having a way to come out. But when Jesus rose from the dead and on the cross took our sins away, now the devil no longer has the power to keep people locked up in what things look like, in what things you and I done did wrong. Because through the blood of Jesus, we can receive forgiveness and believe by faith that he is faithful and just when we confess our sins and that he forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness, which kills fear that God is not going to come through and answer our prayers in our lives. And so, so many people, when they don't know how they got love, they can't continually keep casting out fear. Uh, the Knox translation said in, in Hebrews 2.14 that by his death, he would dispose the prince of death, that is the devil, disposed to remove from a throne or other high office. Jesus absolutely knocked the devil's head off and moved him out of position of high office where he could keep God's people locked up. I like the Wayman translation. In order that through death, he might render powerless him who had authority over death. See, authority over death, saints, is when you can lock somebody up and they can't get out. Jesus came and brought the devil to naught in that he can't keep us locked up in nothing. Glory to God. Did you hear that? And some of y'all out there listening and watching the broadcast, you know Satan has been bounding you, but it's because of a lack of knowledge or you're not putting faith in what Jesus did for you or you're just walking in disobedience to the Lord, therefore not accessing the grace that has been provided for you in Christ. See, you have to access that grace. And God just don't pull this on you because you accepted Jesus and became his child. No, you have to live in it by faith. Oh, I like the, the Rothenham in Hebrews 2.14. That he might paralyze him that held the dominion of death that is the adversary. That, that means uh, that the devil will come and, and act like he's going to destroy your life. And he comes after you. And then you say, in the name of Jesus, and you paralyze him. See? And you got to continue to paralyze him. Yeah, he might come back, but paralyze him again. And lock him up where he can't move in your life. By the authority and the love that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Stephen translation said that he might render powerless him who introduced death into the world. Coney Bear said he might destroy the Lord of death. Wiss translation said he might render inoperative the one having the dominion of death and effect the release of those. Hallelujah. I like weeks. He might put to an end to him who possessed the lordship of death. Jesus put an end to Satan keeping us separated from God. Amen. Jesus put an end to it. You, you ain't got to be sick no more. You ain't got to be bound no more. You ain't got to be on drugs and alcohol and smoke cigarettes. You ain't got to keep cursing it. You ain't got to keep lying it. You ain't got to keep fornicating. You ain't got to keep committing adultery. You ain't got to keep living in fear, in bondage, scared to come out of the house, scared you're going to get some germs, scared somebody to get on an airplane, scared to ride a train, scared to ride a bus, scared something going to bite you. Scared of some mosquito with West Nile and scared of the chicken flu and the, and the Asian flu and scared to send your children to school because you heard somebody that got some flu. But glory to God, I pleaded the blood of Jesus over my son and sent him right on to school. And I used my faith that no weapon formed against him will prosper, that every sickness and disease will die when it come now hit dwelling in Jesus' name. He never did come back home sick. Never did come back home sick. And you have to be careful speaking all those faith, all those doubt words and faith. You know, you know, I'm telling you some of my uh, grandmamas and mamas and, 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 and aunties and, and 
I mean, you go outside and it's 60 degrees. They say you're going to get a cold if you don't put on no jacket. And, oh, and then you got one too because they spoke that fear on you. They should have said when you was going out, uh, I'm believing God, you, you're going to be all right. God's going to protect you and have mercy on you for being stupid. You know, if it's 30 degrees. But, but, but see, you speak fear. We always should speak faith, not fear. Basic English said by death, Jesus might bring to nothing the Lord of death. Hallelujah. Jesus brought the devil to nothing. Nothing. Boy, you listen to some preachers, they act like the devil just really mighty. But he ain't. God speed. He might dethrone the Lord of death. CP said he might break the grip of the one who controls death. Amen. See, the devil still uh, has control with death, but not over faith in Jesus. That's where he's lost it. That's where he's been dethroned and no longer possesses the ability to keep people locked up when they call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Authentic, he might put out a commission. Glory to God. Jesus put the devil out of commission. Now, now, now watch that. And that don't mean the devil ain't still trying to work in your life. See, you got to live in faith in Jesus put him out of commission. You have to enforce. What, what does that mean, Pastor Scales? You're going to have to act like you did like Jesus. So you can walk in the same authority, dominion, and power and glory that Jesus walked in where you live under the devil is out of commission. He did totally out of commission in my life. Did completely. Julius Smith translation said that by death he might leave unemployed him having the strength of death. Oh, glory to God. Jesus done left the devil unemployed. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil has been unemployed by the Lord. And Satan, but I'm telling you, I know some of y'all out there say, wait, well, he's not that, that, that unemployed in my life, but he can be if you keep on listening to the word of God. Now, let me, let me give you some examples. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, amen, the word said, um, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, I like this in the, in the New Living's translation. 1 John 4, 18. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of judgment. And this shows that his love has not been perfected in us. Amen. So, so if you don't get a revelation, saints, I'm telling y'all, the only way you're going to get rid of fear and defeat fear is to live in faith in how you got love on the cross. Now, I want to look in Mark chapter 5. In verse um, 21. And when Jesus will pass over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. And he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought Jesus greatly, saying, My little daughter laughed at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So here this man is, was a, a high priest. He fell down and worshiped Jesus and told Jesus to come and lay his hands on his daughter because his daughter was dying. Now, and then we, we'll skip over the woman with the issue of blood to get to verse 35. And while Jesus yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubleth thou the master any further? Now, now watch, here's what happened. That this man is believing in the authority and the love that's in Jesus. He sees Jesus going around loving everybody. Jesus' power hitting everybody. 
And he had faith in that love that if Jesus would come and lay his hands on his daughter, that she would be healed. Amen. We see that at, 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 at Jesus and the church all the time. And, and so when they came and told him, thy daughter is dead, verse 35, why troubleth thou the master any further? That means what you was believing, Jairus, for Jesus to lay hands on your daughter so she wouldn't die. Forget that she's dead now so you can just leave Jesus alone. Oh, but i got good news for you. Listen, Jesus is bigger than the add-on. He's bigger, saints, than the add-on. I know, I know some of y'all don't understand what that means, but I'm going to explain it. When Jesus Christ, when you are trusting his love and in faith in him, believing to receive what he has done for you, and then something else get added to that, he's bigger than that. Amen. 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 So, so if you trust in God to, to, to pay your bills and then the car break down, well, don't get in fear that you're not going to make it in nothing now because the same God who you were trusting, who loved you with five bills, he's just as much in love with you with six bills or ten more bills. He's bigger than the add-on. And here Jairus was in faith, see, that he had heard about Jesus, and, and that made him have faith to ask Jesus to come and lay hands on his daughter. Then he heard she would be. See, see, faith came by hearing what, what how God loved in Jesus, and then faith came by hearing, in perverted faith came by hearing, don't follow Jesus in the follow your daughter's dead. Give up. So you see fear is coming by what you hear. And so, so Jesus said as soon, see, you got to get these words in, in Mark 5, verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word, heard what word? Not, no, not nothing God said. When he heard what they were telling Jairus, to don't bother Jesus because it's too late now. Jesus said unto the ruler of the synagogue. See, see now, you might not have Jesus there speaking like he was physically there with Jairus. So you got to get full of the word so you can speak it to yourself. Amen. Or God will send somebody to speak the word to you so you can get faith in how he loved you where you don't produce living in the fear that you just got through hearing about what's wrong in your life. Amen? That's good, that's good teaching. And so Jesus, as soon as he heard the word that was spoken to Jairus, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Hallelujah. And I tell you, by the Spirit of God, that's a word for you today is quit fearing, quit being afraid, Quit believing what that fear is looking like. Quit believing what that voice is 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 hearing. Quit believing what 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 those feelings are saying, and quit believing your past can stop you from what God has done for you in Jesus. It can't unless you don't believe it. Amen. And so Jesus said, "Be not afraid. Only believe. Why? Because He's bigger." Then the add-on. Anything you going through, he's bigger. And if you get another ton of junk, he's bigger than that too. And then when you get through with that, he's bigger than that too. Now I want to get ready to close. Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. I want to close today in John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you. See, see, he always got a word. You always, I'm going to teach this this week. Don't miss these broadcasts this week. Amen. Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. I'm going to get into how to really live. Feel free. Jesus said, these things in, in John 16, 33, I have spoken to you that in me, see, in me, you might have peace. No, not in, not in the world. But Jesus said in me, you have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, tests and trials, 
frustrations. You gonna have them if you if you live on this earth. But Jesus said, "Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world." That means He wants you to get happy in every test and trial, in every trouble you go through. He said, "Go on and get happy." No, no, don't don't get excited about what's wrong. Get excited about He has overcome the world. What that mean, Pascal? He has deprived the world of power to harm you and conquered it for you. Amen? Amen. My time's up. But we're going to pick this back up tomorrow, so don't, don't miss the broadcast. I want to make available to you these six tape uh, series and also uh, six CDs. Amen. For a love gift of $30 or more, we'll send these out to you. They will absolutely transform your life. And saints, listen. You make your checks payable to Jesus is the Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And we'll get these right out to you. Amen. And I'll I'll pay the postage. And we'll just we'll just get these out. And your life will never, ever be the same. Amen. So y'all order these. Amen. And order a couple of them for your friends so they can uh, uh, enjoy living fear free. For marriages, for any area, these these are absolutely teach you how to live in the love of God. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church located now. We're in Watertown. We've purchased land and a building up there. On the screen is our phone number, or call us and and get directions to the church. Amen. We're on West Main Street, and call us at six one five six four one three five zero five Saints, a church that's alive. It's work to drive. If you're hungry for truth, if you're hungry, saints, and you're not being fed, you're not going to church, you're not getting after God, I'm telling you there's an anointing at the church that will set you free and set you on fire for the Lord. Amen. You ought to come and see our church. It's wonderful. You'll be so blessed. And uh, and so we invite you all to come. We know your life will never be the same. Our service time's on the screen. Amen. Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, Sunday school. Uh, 10 o'clock worship service, and then Thursday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. We also have prayer on Sunday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. from 7 to 8. And we love you, and I know your life will never be the same. And also, I want to thank my partners. Thank my friends. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us to continue to get the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it was not for my partners and those that believe and and receive many of y'all been so blessed by the broadcast so consider being a, a blessing and helping us amen maybe a one-time gift or you might like support us monthly but we would appreciate it well my prayer for you is that you will know the love of christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of god from pastor scale we from jesus and some ministries we look forward to seeing you tomorrow have a blessed day in jesus bye bye